What's going on, YouTube? It is your boy Ray Bands, and we are in our bag. Okay, um, I have a treat today. I'm gonna be very brief. I'm going to explain a strategy called Surefire. The point of practicing this strategy is to be able to pinpoint the best time to get in for a high frequency trade. Okay, it's literally only it's really only one indicator, but it is four indicators, or actually five indicators. Um, that sets up this strategy. I'm going to go ahead and run through that for you so you can set it up on your pocket options broker or, you know, trading view if that's what you like to use. And uh, you can start smacking some trades, man. You can have more confidence hopping in these trades. OK, here we go. The first thing that we're actually going to set up is we're going to go to our candles. All right. And we're going to change it to Haken Ashi candles. OK, and we want to be on the one minute time frame. Haken Ashi candles one minute time frame okay we're going to go to our indicators and we're actually going to add bollinger band so this right here is the indicator button you can see right here where my mouse is at you're going to click that and you're going to go down to bollinger bands not bollinger bands with width just bollinger bands okay and what you're going to do is you're going to hit this little uh this little pencil and this is actually the settings and the inputs you're going to put 20 and the deviation you're going to put two the style, you're going to uncheck the middle. You're going to uncheck the background. You're going to make the top one red. You're going to make the bottom one red. OK, then you're going to add the second Bollinger Band. You're going to make the period, which is 20 and the deviation three. And you're actually going to make style the top blue and the bottom blue. You're going to uncheck the middle, uncheck the background. We're going to save. OK, and then right here on Bollinger Bands. The last one, we're going to do 20 and then deviation four. OK, so you've added the Bollinger Bands three times. Add them one by one, by the way. If you add them all three at the same time, it might be a little confusing. Just add them one by one if you have to. So period 20, deviation four. The style, the top is going to be green. You're going to have the middle check this time. It's going to be white. And then the bottom uh, is going to be two. As far as the pixels are concerned, you can choose whatever pixels you like. Um, that's why I really didn't mention that too much. And then we're going to add a moving average of 50. So we're going to go up here and we're going to choose moving average. Once you add moving average, you're going to hit that little pencil. You're going to select it to be an EMA. It's going to say SMA, WMA, SMMA, but we want the exponential moving average. That's what's called EMA. And we're going to set that to 50. OK. And the last thing that we're going to add is going to be the RSI, the relative strength index relative strength index which is let me see if i can identify it for you right here boom right under parabolic sar okay so we're going to hit that and that's actually going to be 14. the inputs on that is going to be 14 and this is how i like my style i like the main line to be green you know you want your settings to be 70 uh, 50 and 30 and then, uh, of course, you know, you got the blue at the bottom to kind of signify when to buy. You have the red at the top that kind of signifies when to sell. You have that middle line just so you can see who's in control. And then the main line is green so you can see. Once you have that set up, you have the sure fire strategy. And let me tell you why it is considered to be the sure fire strategy. Because once uh, price is at a particular point inside of these Bollinger Bands, you just are so sure that you're going to get that beautiful snapback. Now, you can have this with regular candles. I'm not going to switch it to regular candles. You can do this with regular candles. But the reason why I say don't is because Hakanashi is going to help you see direction. And that's what you want. The worst thing you can do is hop in a trade saying it's going to go up and it just it just tanks on you. OK, and I know you guys have experienced that. You see something. It's like every time you put in a trade price, want to do the opposite. And sometimes it might happen so much to where you feel like the broker is controlling price, <laughs> which that's not true. You just really suck at entering. So we're just going to keep it real. And um, we, we about to make you be cold now. This is easy. This is free money. I'm giving you guys free game. Watch this. You see, our, we have our Hakanashi candles coming in here when it's at this red line. That's a OK. Let me see if my RSI is close to the bottom, if I want to take a reversal trade there. When you see it near this blue line, that's like, hmm, you know, that that can be an automatic snapback. When it usually when it touches that line, you know, you have like an 80 percent, 85 percent chance and it's going to go ahead and turn around. And with Hakanashi candles, since it doesn't really show you 
like the very extreme. Like if you use regular candles, these candles will like go past the green sometime and you will have just perfect entries and then it'll just retrace and it'll never come back. But Hakanashi, it when it touches the blue, now you're like, okay, I need to be looking for an opportunity to buy. It does not mean hop in right then and there. Because you can do that and you can get caught in a situation like this where if you hop in right then and there on this green candle, it still climbs for a couple more candles, a couple more minutes. And we're doing three minute trades. OK, so we want to get in the trade and get out the trade. That means that our entry game has to be perfect. So when you see the candles near the Bollinger Bands, whatever side, if it's at the bottom, we're looking for a buy. If it's at the top, we're looking for a sale. Wait, wait. Well, Ray, how do I know how to wait? Perfect. We want to look for an indecisive candle. See, and this is not just a regular indecisive candle. A doji candle is a is an indecisive candle for the candle chart, but we're on the hakanashi. So when you see a doji candle on that, that is a very big deal because that means it is a, a collection of candles that creates the doji candle inside of the hakanashi, which means that that is a very strong indicator. What does a doji candle look like? This right here. Let me see if I can get some and draw it so I can circle it for you. Okay, we can do a rectangle. Okay, let's move it right here. Let's change the color. We're going to make that yellow. There we go. We're going to make that small and we're going to move it. This is a doji candle. Okay, that's a doji. So I want you to look every time you see that. Every time you see that, I want you to see what happens. Now, will it continue? Sometime can you get a doji candle like this and it still goes up for a little bit? Absolutely. But look where that doji candle is. It is in the middle of space. It's not near these bands. So if you hopped in right here for a sale and it went up, you have no reason to be mad. That was just a bad trade that you took. Okay. Look right here. Is it inside the bands, near the bands? Hmm, kind of. Not really, though. See, you can't really predict what price is going to do. But you can have impeccable timing. So when you see these candles, just watch out. You see the indecisive candle. The next candle, if it opens the way it's supposed to open, then you take it. This one right here open. It goes up. Look, it never goes down. So it opens. It goes up. It closes. Then you get the red candle right here. Boom. This is where I would have hopped in right here. You know, but Ray, look, it's already near the band. No problem. No problem at all. I can tell right here, according to this line right here on the RSI, this 50 line in the middle, which you know what? Let's make that let's make that a different color. Let's go back into the RSI, click that 50 line, and let's make it black. And we're gonna make the pixel four so we can see the 50 line. Okay. I can see that it's below the 50 line, so that lets me know sellers are gonna be in control just for a little bit. It's trending right now. That's what you want. You want the market to trend. That's easy trades. But if you're waiting for a reversal, that can be very frustrating because the market will continue to go in that direction and hurt you. Okay. So we take the trade right there. Three minutes later, it's down here somewhere. We get a bit clear. We can wait a little bit longer. This is like five minutes. And then look, the beautiful, you got the push down into the bands, and then it comes up right here for the indecisive. A pro entry, you can enter on the indecisive, but that can be risky. You can literally say, okay, I see the indecisive. Let me see if the next candle opens up green. Boom, you got the open up green. You take it for three minutes. It's up here somewhere. You win the trade. This is just to help you see direction. And that's literally it. That's the entire strategy. Um, you can add, the reason why we added the EMA line is because it just gives you an idea of what's going on overall. When I see that I have a strong buy signal right here, so it's been in consolidation. All right. So let's mark this right here. And if you don't know market structure, you know, man, please learn market structure. Like market structure is important. OK, look at this. This is consolidating. Anytime you have this right here, you're going to get a strong move out of that. Look, consolidation, strong move. Consolidation, strong move. It's, it just happens over and over. Look at this. It even pushes down into the band and just snaps back. You see that? So when I see this, I can say, OK, it's consolidating near this EMA line. I know that if the candles, the candles are above this line, I should be looking for buys. Right. So if we wanted to look at the overall picture, we buy right here. We wait. It comes back right here. We start to see a rejection. We buy right here. You see what I'm saying? That's overall. Now, inside of that trend, we can catch the sale, too, just because of our strategy. But if we just looking at this consolidation zone and we get this strong candle, and a little bit indecisive, strong right here. It opens right here on that line. I'm going to go ahead and take that for a buy. That's what I see as a buy. And look, three minutes later, we, we're good to go. 
and, the, and then it trends, it snaps back, consolidates for a little bit, pushes up again, consolidates for a little bit. You know, and the better you get at trading, you'll be able to catch these entries for the sale. You see, you'll be able to catch those. You'll be able to see them because the more you trade, you'll kind of know what the candles start to do. This is another tip that I want to give you. OK, and I'm going to wrap this up. Take time when you get on the demo to really see what this looks like. You see how this Hakanashi candle is growing and it has a wick on it. But if you look at the line, the line is at the tip of the wick. It is not like regular price candles where the wick is where price used to be. That's not the case. Inside of this Hakanashi candle, it's all a type of candles that's happening. The Hakanashi is just painting the direction for you. So that can be confusing if you think that this wick, that price is way down here and you take a, a, a reversal. But in reality, price is going to just keep going down just because it's not done yet. You see what I'm saying? So take time to pay attention to what's going on with the Hakanashi candle before you just hop in. And as you can see, this is just gigantic consolidation. This is gigantic consolidation. So if I see this right here close and it's stronger and it's getting stronger, like it's continuing to go down, then I would be comfortable taking a sale right here because sellers are in control. But I'm going to wait for this. I'm going to wait for this candle to close before I actually take that for three minutes. I'm going to actually take it right now so we can see what happens. OK, we're going to see what, what's hap what happens with this trade. But that, that's all that we're looking for. We're just looking forward to get into these zones. We want our RSI to be near the bottom. We want to see that indecisive candle and we hop in and we catch the reversal trade. Same thing. Look at that at the top. We got the RSI at the top. We got the indecisive candle. Three minutes later, we catch the trade. So right here, when I'm looking and see, look, look what price did. Look, it's going back up into that zone. It's just consolidating. So right now, since it didn't do what I wanted to see, I would be foolish to take this trade. This right here is not a currency that I should be trading right now because it's not trending and it's, it's doing whatever it wants. We just going to stay away. You see that? So let's see if we can switch. Let's see if we can find a trade really quick. OK, I got this right here actually crossing above. We got this right here crossing above 50. It's coming into the EMA. We got a whole bunch of, hmm. What I can see is the direction is still, even though it was consolidating, it dropped and went into the band. It kind of reversed and it's working its way up. We got 26 seconds on this. We're going to see what happens. We want to see if this is up, if it comes into here, if it bounces back, or if it's going to continue to stay, uh, stay strong going up. So we're going to wait 17 seconds and see if we have a trade. Okay, we got consolidation right here. We got seven seconds. Okay, that's not what we want to see. You see that? You don't you don't know what's gonna happen. No problem. No problem. Let's go look for another trade. Let's go look for another trade. All right, look at this right here. This right here actually has been trending up for a little bit. It's not even moving too much. But you see right here, comes up, bounce back just for a little bit, force this way up again. As you can see, it's kind of just stalling out right now. I like to wait and see what's going to happen. You're going to push down. You're going to move. CAD and the Swiss franc. We'll keep an eye on that. Let's go down to Euro CAD. Right here. Kind of just playing around on that 50 line. Not interested. USD JPY. Playing up right here. We're coming across that 50 line. Big uptrend. Hmm. Let me mark this real quick. Yeah, let's mark that. This is what I see. At the top of that box right there. I'm going to price trap this. That's what we're doing is price trapping. Okay, and at the bottom right here. Let me move this up. Okay, and it's currently in the middle. I would like to see this force up. So we're going to keep an eye on that. USD JPY. Let's go back up here, see what this is doing. Okay. AUD JPY, same thing. Kind of forcing its way into the bands. It's oversold. We're going to wait. Still got big bodies. Okay. Okay. I like this. Yes, sir. I like this a lot. Hold up. It pushed up. It's coming back down. We got 19 seconds on this right here. Let's see. Yes, sir. Free money. Well, this is demo, but this will be free money. I want to see it open. Next candle. Got right here. Red. Let's get it. 
We got an entry right there. We want to see that push down for three minutes and we're going to be good. So we got one trade in right now. Let's go look for another one. You're okay. Okay. Pushes up. We got some indecisive stuff going on right now. We got 40 seconds on this. And you'll be surprised how all the currencies kind of do the same thing. But let me let me ask something because I said this in my last video. Time is very important. At the 15 minute mark, the 30 minute mark, um, the 45 minute mark and the hour mark, you can always have a reversal. So every 15 minutes, you could be looking for like a major reverse. If we look at the time right now on my screen, it says 1245. Right. And now we're starting to get reversal signals on the one minute. OK, so we're looking at this. If we just go off that, some people literally don't use indicators. They literally trade off of time. They literally use uh, candle patterns and time to be able to predict or um, take their trades for their winning binary trades or whatever. So we see this right here is kind of pushing up on the new candle. No problem. Look at that. Yep. We good. It decides it wants to keep going up. We are definitely good. Our other trade is out of profit right now. We about to go look and see what's happening with that. Um, where was I at? I was at shift, so we're gonna go to in, in New Zealand dollar that is consolidating, it's been consolidating the longest, it's been playing around in this area. It can go up or down. Mm, I would be more comfortable taking a sale, but we're not gonna touch that. Let's go uh, check our other trade. What's well, actually back in profit now? Euro USD, it's not really moving too much, it's not really moving too much, so. Uh, hopefully we don't get the, the discretion of just being spiked, but we're going to see, we got a minute left. It should give us a good push. I'm not really worried about that. Sellers are in control. It seems like for now. And that's why you want to give yourself time too. like when you do those one minute trades, you know, that one minute could have been the mark where it wants to pull up just for a little bit and, you know, spike you out, which is unfortunate. So I like to do, you know, three minute, three times the amount of the actual chart that I'm looking at. So if I'm looking at a five minute chart, I want to be doing 15 minute trades. Sometimes I do 10 because I like to get in and out. But at least at least very minimum, you want to do a candle and then half of the next candle. So right here, a minute and a half trades. But your entry game got to be cold. Three minutes just gives the price time to play out. That's what it does. So when you're looking for secure entries and you're looking for what I look for and you hop in for three minutes, even if the market wants to play around just for a little bit, it'll give the market enough time to go ahead and get that push that you need to be able to clear your trade. Um, we're looking at this trade right here. We got five seconds left. We are all the way in profit. We good to go. This is a clear just like that right in your face. Let's see if we can find one more. Let's see if we can find one more. Let's go to New Zealand, uh, the New Zealand dollar and the Canadian dollar. This is trending very hard. Look at the RSI is kind of just pushing up. When you see this, if you don't know, if you don't like feel like you know what's going to like happen, you don't have to trade it. Now I'm looking at this and you know, if it doesn't get stronger, I'll take the sale. I'll take the sale. But look, it's constantly getting stronger. It's constantly pushing up into the bands. You don't have to sit and wait. You can just change and go look. Look, whole bunch of indecisive Look like it want to switch. If it's still doing this like three minutes from now and it's just playing, we're going to wait for the one o'clock mark, maybe around one. You see this? Look how far it's pushing up. Maybe around one, um, you know, it'll want to reverse. But right now it probably just doesn't reverse. And you can use time as a gauge. See, look at this. This is starting to consol consolidate bad. I'm not interested in that. This is pushing down hard. Look, it's pushing all the way down. And you see the bands moving. So this is another thing I can show you. Yes, when it gets into this band, we want to look for a reversal. OK, but when you see that the RSI is just straight down, you see that these bands are not staying in place. Like right here, the bands are kind of like solid. So when it pushes up into it, you can kind of see the reversal when the bands are getting out of the way. And it's just kind of letting price just continue to fall. That means that it's trending. So I really don't have a suggestion on how you can enter that because you don't know when it's going to return, I would just say you would have to look at structure. So right here, I see that this is a resistance level. It's been pushing for a long time. I'll take a three minute buy right here. And the reason why I want to take a three minute buy right here is because I, I see resistance right here. So we're going to grab, let me grab, uh, let's get a line. Okay. And we're going to put that line right here. At the very edge right there, we're going to make it thicker so you can see we're going to make it yellow. 
and here we go. All right. So the pro entry would have probably been closer to the line, but I see resistance right here. Now, can it break resistance? Absolutely. But I see how long it's been falling. And I also know that, it, you know, with market structure, it just can't do it just can't keep going down. Like, you know, for 20 minutes straight, it just can't always go down all red, all red, all red. It has to be some type of green, some type of release before it falls again. So when you think about that and you see that nice drop and you have a resistance right there, I can see it bounce it off just for a little bit and then continuing down or bouncing off and kind of retracing back up. So we got it. We in profit right now. We're going to see how that play off. That's why I put that trade in. Let's see if we can find something else. EuroCAD. Okay. This looks like it's trying to come out of a consolidation. It's bouncing up past 50%, kind of playing around. I'm not interested in that. Okay. This has been completely oversold. We're going to zoom out, look at market structure. Uh, this has, it was consolidating for a good little minute. Breakaway entry coming this way. I feel like it has a little bit more room to pop up before it gets to a resistance. I'm going to put that resistance down so you can see where I'm looking at. Oh, wow. Every time I got to redo this, that's unfortunate. Let me see. Okay. Boom. So I feel like I would be comfortable when it gets up there. Now, by one o'clock, it might actually be in that area and we can take it. Now, if it reverses early, mm, I'm not going to hop in because I see it getting weaker right here. It might just get weak for a little bit, then shoot up and touch that line. You know, a good rule of thumb is always trying to trade near resistance zones or support zones. You see what I'm saying? So uh, let's see this. Let's see if we can find a couple more before I go check this other trade. Let's see. Okay. This right here looks a little promising. It comes right here. It's kind of falling down. We got 50 seconds. This is that new candle. I'm going to go ahead and take this one as well. And the reason why I want to take this is because um, you want to see this candle, but this is a premature take. Can you win this? 100%. Absolutely, you can win it. But we want to see what happens if you take a premature trade, if it stalls out too long or not, and not waiting for this to complete before you take it. We want to see what happens. So that's why I took that trade just for an example. We're going back to the, the euro. Look at that. We got seven seconds. Now, look, price is trying to spike us out right now. So we got four seconds still in profit. Yeah, we're going to clear this trade, too. Beautiful. Beautiful. We cleared that, too. That was pretty close, though. You see how it's a little indecisive right there? That was pretty close. So remember I said I could see it bouncing up just for a little bit and then coming back down. But because I waited, because I waited, I feel like that's why I, I, uh, I actually cleared that trade. But look at it. It did exactly what I said. Boom, boom. Up. Oh. Well, maybe not. Who knows? So that's why you want to wait for your confirmations, man. You don't want to be getting caught in that. And that's why you want to have the time, because nine times out of 10, even though sometimes you will be you will you'll always be right using this if you wait for the confirmations. But sometimes, you know, like price will just spike down just for a little bit and it'll get you. But more times then less times, more time helps you, if that makes sense. That sounds very confusing, but if you have more time, it'll help you more times than when you don't have enough time, okay? So we'll look at that. So we're going to uh, look at this last trade right here. Remember, we took it prematurely. We took it prematurely. We just kind of saw the red candle. We didn't wait for the red candle to close. So we want to see if it's going to actually put us in a trade or, or if it's going to make us lose. We got a minute and 23 left, okay? So y'all can get an example, a little bit of everything. Let's see what happens. And by the way, if you have any questions, you know, if you if you don't understand like market structure and you would like me to make like a market structure video, I could tell you guys what I know. I wouldn't call myself an expert, but I do study every day. Um, and it will be one day where my YouTube channel will not be able to cover everything. You see what I'm saying? I do plan on um, building an organization and teaching people and, and having a team. Uh, I do plan on uh, not only becoming a multimillionaire myself, you know, making one hundred thousand dollars a year is cool with taxes and all. But, uh, you know, we want to be a multimillionaire. We want to control our money and I want to be able to help other people do the same thing. So we're going to build the infrastructure to help people make more profit. YouTube is a way where I can just share you know, some strategies or some things that I know that I feel like other people on YouTube don't share. I have watched a couple of videos and they just kind of give you like basic stuff, 
So this right here is sauce, man. I'm telling you right now, I've already used this strategy to make thousands of dollars. So um, this is just open to you to use. That's all you have to wait for is the confirmations. We in profit right now. We'll see if it'll keep us in profit the whole time. We got the last three seconds right here. Even with the premature entry, we get the clear that is three and O in your face. OK, so that's all you got to do. Let's do a review real quick and I'm going to wrap this up. What we want to do is we say we, we want the Hakanashi candles to paint direction and we want to trade at resistant zones. Those resistant zones are going to be inside of the Bollinger Bands. We want to see price push up in there. We want to see the RSI oversold and we want to take a three minute sale or a three minute buy in the opposite direction. OK, when it's trending or if you are not sure when to get in, you can also wait for it to get up there and then you see the indecisive before you take the down trade. But when you do that, you just want to be careful and make sure that you're not in the middle of a trending market like this. As you can see, buyers did not release. Look at that. That is not a perfect reversal. That's a that's a loss right there. But right here, it's a perfect reversal. Big indecisive candle. Boom. Down. Pushes up right here. Whole bunch of indecisives. You know, this can kind of get you right here and then boom, pushes down. And then this is what you're looking for. It pushes down right here, comes back out, gives you the indecisive. Next one is green. You take the green. Boom. And it's above the EMA. OK, and that's all you're looking for. Looking for the reverse. If you want to trade the trend, I would say if you see like, OK, it's been trending up right here and then it's near the EMA and you get that big push, then, hey, you know, I would say right here near the EMA is a good entry point or you can wait because you know pressure needs to die down a little bit so you wait for it to push 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 you get the indecisive and then look you get the the green candle going up you can take the next green and it'll push up for you you can look for that but it is no really just like strategy as far as saying hey I think this is going to continue up that's just a trade that you take because you kind of see the way price is acting inside of the Hakanashi okay so that's my that's my best advice for you guys so I really hope that this helped you I hope that you take this information and you run with it um, practice your market structure you should know how to do exactly what I did when I marked my support and resistance you should be able to see when things reverse if you want a hint support and resistance can be marked every time the market change directions OK, so look, I'm going to just use this line. I'm going to move it so you can see. Look at this. Support. And, get out. Come on, man. Get out of my way. All right. Look, support and resistance right here. OK, look, see right here. Market reversed. That can be a support or resistance. Look right here. Market reverse. Every time the market changes, you can have a line always right there. You can also call that these pivots. You see this? Look, this is support and resistance way down here. That's a pivot. Then it came up right here. It came from right here. Pivot. That's a pivot. Pivot. You see that? Pivot. 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 You see that? Beautiful. Beautiful. Every time it changed direction. So uh, I hope that helps you guys. And, uh, you know, post some post some profits in the chat. Share this with your friends. It's probably trying to trade too. trading is real. Trading can expedite any goal that you have. If you're trading by yourself and you're trying to do this, do it for free YouTube journey. I wouldn't suggest that. But since you're doing it, you might as well do it with a strategy that works. Any strategy can work. You just have to practice it. So, you know, sit your real money to the side. You know, I make thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. And I still get in my demo every single day day to practice to make sure I know what I'm looking at okay and as you practice you know you want to keep up with things like how do I feel when I take my trades you want to make sure that you know if you lose too many trades you you don't start to feel like you need to revenge you want to control that as much as you can I know professionals who still can't control that fully so you know it's okay but if you're willing to blow some accounts and keep funding up that's you but you want to nip that in the bud as soon as you can um and you just take these strategies and you find what you're looking for and you just wait to see that don't guess take only the setups don't trade with your emotion and you are going to make some bread and your compound interest is going to get so big that one day your pocket options account or your race options account, whatever you're using, it will pay you way more than any job, any profession can ever pay you. I promise you, man, I just solely believe that. And uh, it's a great opportunity. So uh, you guys get out there and trade. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, put it in the comment sections below. I will catch you guys on the next video.